If you've ever had the misfortune of being around me after a few cans of Tisky or watched my Ode to Broken Games video, you've probably heard me blabber on about how I think X-Men vs Street Fighter is one of the best fighting games to date. Today I'm basically going to be banging on your door explaining one of the many reasons why you should be accepting the light into your life and getting yourself on Fightcade as soon as possible. Converting a hit into a combo isn't something specific to fast paced games but it has always been a highlight. The myriad of movement options and buttons allow some incredibly creative ways of turning that stray hit into a touch of death. Combine this with all the parts of the stage different characters have to stay in in order to be effective, you constantly see players being forced into finding new ways of making that random button from a scramble situation count. X-Men vs Street Fighter however takes this to an entirely different level. Instead of letting one or two grounded attacks allow for a follow up in the air, all normal buttons do. So like Ryu cancels his crouch hard punch into a fireball, you can cancel anything into a super jump. Now why is this interesting? Well when you combine it with the hugely diverse range of air movement options and attacks, suddenly tools which seem to have minimal impact on the game just spring to life. Take Magneto's crouching medium kick, a button which can't combo into any special attack outside of his projectile and doesn't cancel into any other normal, it's pretty dull. But if we super jump cancel it, we can hit with a jumping medium kick on the way up, air dash down forward for another one and you can repeat this indefinitely. So we've just taken a button which does basically nothing and turned it into a save flow that leads to an infinite on hit. It's not just air dash characters that benefit from this. Zangief's standing heavy kick is a pretty good anti-air and can only be followed up by green hands as a combo normally. Throw super jump cancelling into the mix and go straight into a lariat and you found yourself another infinite combo. It's not just the fact that this gives the game a whole host of ridiculous infinites that makes it fun, it's the flexibility it provides. When I started learning Chun-Li in Street Fighter 5, I looked at what appeared to be her best two buttons, back medium punch and stand hard punch, both of which can't be cancelled in specials, just V trigger. The limited movement meant that it just came down to the range in which the button connects as to which combo I had to follow up with. X-Men vs Street Fighter offers some of the cast absurd amounts of possibilities from every single button in every single situation. And for me, the idea of endless possibilities provide constant fun. Each match I play, I see a bizarre scenario play out, and I have to figure out on the fly a combo that works, and that just doesn't get old for me. Now this isn't just the shit on Street Fighter 5, I think there's something to be said about being able to achieve optimal play, and it just becoming a battle of pure mind games, reactions and knowledge, but there's something to be said about this rabid side of things. For a lot of people, the learning curve of a game is the fun part, and having such a steep learning curve can serve for a really different kind of fun that not many other games can really achieve without becoming unnecessarily complex. So yeah, once again, as always, play X-Men vs Street Fighter, even if it's just in training mode, the game is very fun, and for a very different set of reasons than pretty much any other game that I can think of. And uh, yeah, this might become a thing that I do quite a lot, because I like talking about old games. They all have something different to offer, and some things that we're not seeing in the current generation of games. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon. Peace.